Just another day in paradise. started removing the handrails from the mid wreck now. It's Tuesday today, so imagine by the time you see this, this coming weekend, they could well have removed all the handrails and the Zebra will no longer be fully equipped. So, definitely from now on in, if you think of doing the valley bunch, definitely need to bring your axe and crampons. There might still be one handrail in, it might still be partially equipped, but yeah, never know. So, be fully prepared to have to walk down the Arret. But, on the plus side, if they do move all the, remove all the handrails, then you'll be able to ski it again, which is pretty awesome. So there's several big crevasses opening up at the entrance to the Salamonge now. The main snow bridge that everyone was crossing for most of the season, just there, looking very thin, very fragile. There are other ways across now. Most people are going down here, which looks safer. But especially if you're skiing after fresh snow and there's no tracks yet, be aware. It's a big ass hole right here. There's another one just there as well. I've also heard reports that there's a couple of crevasses on the Valley Noir side, which have opened up at the entrance to Salamonge as well. So. In other words, basically, this time of year, the further down you get, the more, more careful you need to be, because there's a lot of big holes. The lower murder glass is filled back in with snow again. You can now ski all the way to here, but you can take your skis off, which is about as close as you're ever going to get. So, not bad. Sure, there's a bit of sidestepping, the occasional rock to hit, but yeah, pretty good. Here at the top of the glacier on, you've seen a hell of a lot of action over the last few days. And consequently, top almost sheet ice, it's incredibly escaped. So the down climb to the weather put your skis on is actually pretty good condition, but then this first little traverse after putting your skis on is like sheet ice. So yeah, you're gonna want to keep your axe out if the conditions are like this. Actually, on the glacier itself, obviously all the powder's gone. Looks like quite chalky snow though, so not too bad. Definitely not pristine powder, which makes things a lot harder. There's lots of tracks heading down into the west cool while further down. I'm pretty sure you need to abseil down there. I don't know what length of rope you need. I've only got a 30 meter rope, so it's not worth the risk. Top was very icy. Had to be very careful on your turns, but coming across to skiers right, left, you look up to it now, a bit better, a bit more powder. The snow's not too bad down here. It's a shame. You have to traverse out left to take the safe exit, just as the snow starts to get really good. But there's a reason for that, of course. This the snow up here is scraped because everyone skied it so much. Pretty atmospheric up here above the clouds, pretty awesome. Team of three there in Paso Real Cuba. I think I saw the map sailing from the start when I was there, so it's taken a long time to get there.
So the exit cooler was absolutely sublime. I was comfortably waist deep on my skinny little lightweight touring skis. But look at that. Well and truly made up for the scraped bare ice at the top of the glacier on itself. And it's absolutely beautiful down here. The snow is still really cold, really soft, really fluffy. Spectacular. So I've just been defeated trying to skin up the north flank of Mont Blanc de Tackle with the aim of skiing the Diversity Couloir today. So it's 50 to choice whether we brought ski crampons or boot crampons. Should have brought both really. I've opted for ski crampons because they're lighter, but there's a five meter section of blue ice here, which is completely impassable. So defeated at the first hurdle. I had a quick look at going the long way round that way, but it's not fancy the look of the seracs just around the corner. And we still didn't know if it would have been passable further around anyway. So opting to ski down, just enjoy the Valley Blanche. But if you are thinking of heading up the Mont Blanc Tackle, maybe do the Trois Monts in anytime soon. Or indeed, if you're thinking of going to climb Sherry Coolwa, that's the rack there. It's gonna go any day now. Big gust of wind will take it. So let's not hang around at the gear up spot for Sherry Coolwa. Definitely cross the plateau down here very quickly. Because when it goes, it's gonna go properly. But yeah, if you are thinking of heading up Mont Blanc Tackle, you definitely need crampons still. It's not skiable yet. And to be honest, looks like skiing down is something very enjoyable anyway at the moment. Wind crushed, so yeah. Another few weeks yet before this becomes good, I think. I'm exhausted. The snow's been so good the last two weeks, it's been really difficult to make yourself stop. This has comfortably been the best two weeks of the season, at least up high anyway. I don't think the freezing level's been consistently this low, with the weather being usable most days, since probably November time. Yeah, there's been a few amazing days dotted throughout the season, but there's just been a few random days here and there, whereas we've had consistently cold, low freezing levels for, yeah, two weeks. In terms of peace skiing, Grand Monte is the last man standing now. So you want to go peace skiing basically anywhere in the area, that's the only option now. Even Verbier is closed. It closed last Sunday. Went there for the closing day and it was a pretty amazing powder day. The visibility was terrible but the snow was awesome. And it's a shame that they're closing really because there's still so much snow there. They keep skiing comfortably for a few more weeks left there too. But unfortunately at this time of year, it's a lack of demand which closes ski centres, not a lack of snow often. So yeah, if you want to do something about it then keep skiing into April. We've still got one more week of lifts of peace skiing to be had at Grand Monte. Uh, reminder again that it's open until the 5th of May this year. And from then onwards, it'll just simply be the year midi left to get you up to the high mountains and ski up to the snow. This last week or so for me, it's been all about skiing the Valley Blanche though. I think I've done more laps of the Valley Blanche or other ski descents off the midi in the last two weeks than I've done in the rest of my lifetime. So yeah, it's been pretty crazy. But the snow up there has just been so good. And a lot of the time, even though it's been cloudy down here in Chamonix, the Guy has been out in the clouds, or the very least, the other side of it's been out in the clouds, so yeah, there's been some absolutely phenomenal conditions. So, I have a slight correction to make from my video last week. Apparently, the north face of Mont Blanc was skied plenty back when the weather was still hot and sunny a couple of weeks ago now. I was based on my information on the latest La Chaminade report, which inevitably is out of date by the time I make these videos. So I was wrong on that point, but everything else I said pretty much still stands. Pretty much the only good weather window we've had in the last two weeks for doing high altitude stuff was yesterday, Thursday, so Inevitably, Mont Blanc via the Grand Monet route was incredibly busy. You could see the tracks heading across from Pan de Ligui. You could see the tracks coming down off of the Petit Plateau back towards the Grand Monet hut as well. So, skiing Mont Blanc from the summit via the Grand Monet route now is very much on any time there's a big enough weather window, really. 
but as I said earlier in this video, 12 months through is still far from being skiable. There's not only is there the five meter section of ice that I can get past on that day, but there's also big, big crevasses further up, which are still basically impassable. So yeah, it's gonna be a little while yet until people are skiing or even indeed climbing the Twin Monts route. So we're starting to see a shift now back towards more normal seasonal temperatures and freezing levels. This is probably the warm front moving through now. And then from tomorrow onwards, it's gonna be more what you'd expect for the time of year really. Nothing exceptional in terms of heat or in terms of snowfall. It's not going to be a huge amount of sun, it's going to be pretty grey, pretty cloudy, but temperatures certainly in the valley are going to be back up into the teens again, and freezing levels going up above mid-mountain now, so slowly but surely the snow quality is going to start to deteriorate, but even that, that said, on north facing slopes, it's just especially above 2000 metres, the snow should still continue to be pretty good for a while yet, because there's no meaningful rain in the forecast which is going to wash it away, and equally, like I say, no strong, strong sun either, so yeah. Not going to have the lovely soft fluffy powder that we've had these last couple of weeks, but there's still going to be some reasonably nice powder to be found up high. But with the wind swinging around to a pretty much consistently southeasterly direction for the next week or so, the dominant feature of the weather is going to be the fern effect yet again. So, well, yeah, freezing levels are going to be relatively normal for the time of year. Down here in the valley, even with the lack of sun, it could feel pretty warm. So, yeah, could well be a strong fern effect, which means not only is it going to be warm in the valley, but the snow could well be wind affected as well, so bear that in mind. So, sadly, still no Cunningham Couloir for me this week, or even the Jupiter City Couloir. Maybe next week, but for now, I'm gonna get down off the top of this rock face before the rain sets in properly. But once again, go out here, have fun, stay safe, and tune in next week.